giant Brian. A criminal so devious he once stole the Mona Lisa and then put it back again because he felt guilty. He truly was the baddest of bad guys, but Brian now found himself in the most difficult situation he had ever faced. Having broken out of prison three times already, he once again woke up in a small dark cell. But this time, it was no ordinary prison. Brian had been sanctioned to Area 17, a secret underground government facility where mad scientists performed all manner of unspeakable research. Those who ended up here were never heard of again. But Brian was built different. He was going to escape. Well, he would have done if only he could take this stupid mask off. What was the point in escaping prison if you couldn't look good while doing it, thought Brian. Ah well, at least as he headed out to roll call, everybody else in here was wearing silly masks as well, only, hang on, there was something familiar about these people. Mystic Meg, Don Krieg, Wendy Nails. He had heard these names before. They were inmates from his previous prisons. What were they doing here? But upon turning around, it all began to make sense. His arch nemesis, Officer Officer, was standing behind a thick pane of glass. So that's what this was about. Officer Officer had gathered up all of the most infamous criminals to use in her sick and twisted experiments. Brian felt uneasy, so he made his way to the cafeteria and got himself a giant plastic knife for protection. With the knife in hand, he felt confident enough to explore his surroundings. There had to be an escape route somewhere around here. But, as he surveyed the rest of the building, his stomach dropped. The whole perimeter was fenced in, locked up by a series of red staff doors. Brian was no stranger to busting through a door or two, but he'd never come across this many before. He continued to investigate, but all he could find was some kind of film studio. Well, guess the moon landings weren't real. Turns out they were just filmed in the Nintendo Switch version of the game Escapist 2. Okay, so no obvious way out. But at the very least, there had to be some sort of escape tools or something. Oh. He didn't want to imagine what people had been using that for. Brian shut his desk in disgust, but he was so strong, he accidentally picked it up instead. And when he put it back down beneath him, he stumbled upon something very intriguing. An air conditioning vent stretched across the ceiling and outside of the fence. This was it, the opening he'd been searching for. Taking a screwdriver from a room nearby, Brian unfastened each corner of the grill and snuck inside. But he wasn't quick enough, he was caught in the act, and the prison was sent into lockdown. Brian had to move fast. He dropped down the other side of the vent and began to run around desperately. But at every turn, he was met with nothing except more red doors. Perhaps downstairs would produce better results. Wait a minute, what on earth is that? Ew, it was rancid. What a weird creature. This place was far more sinister than he could ever have imagined. And to top it all off, as he staggered out into the prison courtyard, he gazed in awe upon what seemed to be a giant UFO. So this is what the government had been hiding. Aliens, real aliens. Brian was freaked out. He wanted nothing to do with it, and he made to leave immediately. But before he could, a police dog came out of nowhere, and he was hunted down. It was no good, the hounds had sniffed him out. And in a whirlwind of snarling jaws, he was knocked unconscious. Well, that was an experience, but thanks to that whole ordeal, one thing was for certain. Brian was going to need to get his hands on a red key. The main problem with this was he had no idea which officer might be carrying one, so finding a red key would take some trial and error. His first target was Officer Punisher. Punisher? I barely know her, thought Brian as he beat off as a Punisher to a pulp. He was carrying the Cyan Key, which, as Brian knew, was not red. God, he was clever. He then spent a day in solitary confinement for attacking a police officer. Once he was out though, he found his next target, Officer Fister. Fister? I barely know her, said Brian, and it was even funnier the second time. Unfortunately, Brian was so busy laughing at his own joke that he forgot to fight back, and Officer Fister was able to knock him out. 
Thankfully, during his trip to the hospital, he bumped into his next target, Officer Saucer. Saucer? I barely know her. Okay, Brian, we get the point by now. And more importantly, there it was, the elusive red key in the possession of Officer Saucer. Brian headed back to his room immediately to gather materials. He combined talcum powder and toothpaste to make a moldable putty. Then he melted a toothbrush to make some molten plastic. And with that, the mission was on. Tracking down Officer Saucer again, he began to bombard him with his signature punches. In no time at all, the policeman was out cold. Brian took the key, but before he could make a duplicate, backup had arrived. He was chased across the entire prison, until, eventually, even Officer Officer joined the fray. He was getting away, until he ran straight into a riot policeman and was knocked unconscious. Attempt number two. This time, Brian decided to change tactics and bring the alien probe with him. Not for anything nefarious, just to use as a weapon, and it's a good job he did too, because Brian was able to take out Officer Saucer with great speed and craft a spare key before anyone could realize. With the red key now in his possession, it was time to move the escape plan into phase two. Unfortunately, phase two did require about 48 hours solid worth of looting, and the longest Brian had ever stolen things before was about 24 hours back in the days when he was just a young whippersnapper. So all of this material gathering was really exhausting. He even took the trouble to beat up Officer Punisher and steal the cyan key so he could break into his secret maintenance room and acquire a spade. Despite this monumental amount of theft, Brian managed to conserve just enough energy to craft himself a pickaxe, a pair of fence cutters, a sturdy shovel, a contraband pouch, and he even got a little bit art and craftsy as he combined toilet paper with glue to make papier mache, then moulding it into some fake vent covers. And finally, after all the preparation, Brian stocked up, changed into a guard uniform he'd stolen from Officer Saucer earlier, and the escape commenced. As the officers called for lights out, Brian hoisted himself cautiously through the ventilation shaft and down to the other side. He snuck his way downstairs, past the weird alien test tube baby, and along the corridor all the way to the very bottom of the prison. He was so close now, all he had to do was pull out his fence cutters and snip his way through here and- Ow! Ow! Oh no, the fence was electric, and these were metal fence cutters! Brian rushed back inside. If he remembered correctly, there was a generator somewhere around here. Aha! There it was! He pulled the lever, and the whole prison powered down. This was now make or break. It would only be a few minutes until every guard in the whole penitentiary was on his case. He chopped away at the fence with all his might, then dashed through, and began to swing his pickaxe wildly at the outer wall. 60%, 40%, 20%, the wall crumbled before him. He was out, he was really out, and he sprinted into the desert as fast as his little legs would carry him. Officer Officer was in hot pursuit, but she wouldn't catch him. Giant Brian was far too quick until, wait, what is that? What is that? Oh God, the UFO was here and it was beaming him up. No! Brian stood there in a state of disbelief. Just a split second ago, he was practically home free. And now, here he was, back in this miserable prison cell. So that's how it was, eh? Officer Officer was using alien technology to catch criminals, and he had been chosen, along with these other legendary bad guys, to be one of her guinea pigs. Well, Brian wasn't having it. Officer Officer could do all the fancy schmancy science experiments she wanted, but nobody could chain him up. Not with handcuffs, not with, uh, chains, I suppose, and not even with alien spaceships. He was going to take her grand scheme and use it against her. Brian was gonna steal that UFO. Hurling into action, Brian's first move was to secure parts from the lunar lander he'd found earlier. This way, he could use them to hot rod the UFO. To reach it, he would need to get through another red staff door. But that was weird. His red key wasn't working. I need the right keycard, thought Brian. He truly was a genius. And after a couple more tussles with various police officers, he found the keycard in the possession of Officer I barely know her. Creating a copy using a spare circuit board, he headed back to the moon room. Now he could open the door no problem, but ah, there was still one major issue. If Brian was stood there keeping the door open, then who was going to go through it? 
This was bad news. A worst case scenario, in fact. Oh, crumbs. Brian was going to have to get himself a sidekick. He wasn't happy about this at all. Giant Brian was famous for working alone. Because of this, he decided to settle for the very first person he bumped into. Okay, who was this? Don Krieg. Yeah, I suppose he would do. Brian informed his fellow inmate of his masterful plan. But as it turned out, Don Krieg was completely inept, to the point where he could barely even walk in a straight line and kept bumping into things. After a rather painful journey, they finally got back to the red door. Don held the keycard in place, and Brian went through to see what spaceship parts he could scavenge. Hmm, an empty canister. That didn't seem incredibly useful, but he was sure it would come in handy for something. Anyway, with the canister in his pocket, time was of the essence. They now had to reach the UFO before Officer Officer noticed anything was missing, but for God's sake, Don, stop walking into the walls. It's really not that hard, just go in a straight line. As he was bumping into things, Don Krieg managed to pick up various electrical items along the way, such as an energy module and a radio receiver. Eventually, out of sheer perseverance, he managed to find his way to the generator room, whilst Brian dashed around the outside and pulled out his trusty fence cutters. As soon as the power went out, he got to work, snipping away piece by piece. There was a reason one of his many nicknames from back in the day was Brian Scissorhands, and it wasn't just because he was a big fan of the movie Edward Scissorhands. Just as Don fumbled his way outside to join him, Brian sheared his way through the final fence. He chucked all of the random electrical equipment into the spaceship along with the empty canister from earlier. And, would you believe it, against all the odds, the UFO whirred into life. The two of them hurried inside as the spaceship beeped and booped, beginning to float gracefully up into the air. They hovered high above Area 17, and Brian felt a great sense of triumph. Engaging warp speed, he cried. The UFO disappeared in a flash. He and Don were going somewhere nobody could catch them. Up, up and away, into the great beyond of space. Unfortunately, a few days later, Brian was arrested by the space police after refusing to pay a speeding ticket. What, it wasn't his fault he didn't know you shouldn't use warp speed in a 30 mile an hour zone?